the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, to have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, the most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus, onemuntatis, latamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, onemigamus te,
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what form they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came to everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area, and to the breaking of the bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul, St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even through tested and fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you, yet you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the glory, the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, <clears throat> Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And we had, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, 
and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. We praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Dear brothers and sisters, today it's Divine Mercy Sunday. The devotion to the Divine Mercy started with the mission entrusted to Saint Faustina. Our Lord asked her to pray and work to have established a feast of the Divine Mercy on the Sunday after Easter. It was Pope John Paul II who established it as a feast in the Universal Church in the Jubilee year 2000. On that same day, he also canonized the humble instrument of the Divine Mercy, St. Faustina. This feast is an annual celebration like the Day of Atonement, and all sins and punishments are washed away in the infinite mercy of God. Thus, a plenary indulgence is granted when we do the following. Go to confession, receive Holy Communion, adore Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, and recite the Creed and the Our Father, Invoke Jesus through the prayer. Jesus, I trust in you. Venerate the holy image of the divine mercy. Pray the three o'clock prayer and the divine mercy chaplet. Have the intention of receiving God's mercy and be detached from all sin. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we fulfill the sacramental conditions by an act of perfect contrition and spiritual communion. While being resolved to receive the sacraments as soon as possible. God is love and he always forgives. This is why he instituted the sacrament of reconciliation, which is a sacrament of mercy. In the gospel, when Jesus appeared to his apostles, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is the foundation of the sacrament of reconciliation by which we enjoy the unfathomable mercy of God through his priests, the ministers of mercy. Jesus exhorted us, Be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. Therefore, we need to be a forgiving people. There is a story about two friends who were moving along the beach. One did something very good to the other, and he wrote it on the sand at the seashore. When the friend did something really bad, the other wrote it on a rock by the sea. When the waves splashed across the seashore, the good deed which was written on the sand was washed away, while the bad deed which was written on the rock remained untouched. 
If we have to be merciful like our Heavenly Father is merciful, then we have to turn things around. We should write down good deeds on the rock and bad deeds on the sand so that they can easily be washed away. Only when we live like this can we form a community of mercy like that of the first reading where they pooled their resources together so that the less privileged could benefit. They offered prayer together and joined in the fellowship. They instructed themselves and others in God's word, breaking the bread of the Eucharist together. They were indeed of one heart and one mind. We cannot have one heart and one mind if we bear grudges against each other, if we hold on to hurts of the past. God calls us to be ministers of his mercy to other people in the world. Many people still live in doubt and disbelief like Thomas. As long as I cannot see God, I refuse to believe that he exists, intoned a conceited young man. And for that very reason, I deny the existence of your mind said the priest. There are tangible and intangible, material and immaterial, perceptible and imperceptible, natural and supernatural realities in our world. Antoine de Saint Exupery says in The Little Prince that what is essential is invisible to the eyes. It's only with the heart that we can see rightly. Thomas discovered the stupidity of his ways and cried out in faith, My Lord and my God. This is the most powerful proclamation of the identity of Jesus. Those who believe in Jesus without seeing him are equal to the apostles who saw him. Jesus, in the Blessed Sacrament, is the one through whom the Father, in his great mercy, has given us a new birth as sons and daughters, as St. Peter says in the second reading. He is the one whose wounds saved us from our sins, the one who showed the scars of these wounds to the doubting Thomas as a sign that he had truly risen from the dead and carried away our sins. Let us ask for the grace to be disciples in, of mercy in our thoughts, words, and deeds. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday to you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The reason Christ brought his peace to the apostles as he showed them his pierced hands and sight. Let us pray confidently in his name, knowing that he brings true peace through his victory over death. That the whole community of the church may remain faithful to the teaching of the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the peace of our risen Lord may spread through our world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the divine mercy may bring peace to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we will share our goods and possessions through generosity and Christian hospitality, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have suffered in some way from the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed will enter the sure hope and promise of their heavenly inheritance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of infinite mercy, we do not see your Son, but we love him and offer our prayers in his name. We rejoice because we believe in him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to, to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, 
We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this portless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Maxilinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed Pope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Mark, all you holy angels and saints of God. Pray for us.